So, difficulties. There's always some difficulties. Arjuna also has some difficulty. Difficult to fight with his family members, right? The battle of Kurukshetra was a family was between the two two sides of a family. You know, sometimes the family members they don't get along with each other. They fight with each other. Right? Do you have any experience like that? Christine, how many people have you got in your family? Uh huh. Are you are you all sisters, or you have mother and father and three sisters? Is it? Oh. Oh, you just have one sister. No brother. at the time you were born but but now they can have now you can have two children right now what yeah and if you're if you're minority then you can have more if you're shao shu mingju <laughs> then you can have more children if you're the minority race. But you're not. You're Han, eh? Mm. Okay, so uh, difficulties. Yeah, brothers, they'll argue with each other, fight with each other, mm. and brother and sister sometimes, especially they'll fight with each other for for money and for property, when the, if the father dies and leaves some property, they'll fight with each other about it, who should get it. There's a lot of issues like that in the world. So Lord Chaitanya, Prabhupada gives the example about Lord Chaitanya, that he took sannyas when he was only 24, and he had a young wife. I think she was about 16 years of age, she married a young woman and he took sannyas and he had his old mother and he went away and left his young wife and old mother with, and they had, the young wife had no child, uh, no one to look after them, Lord Chaitanya left them. Of course the devotees looked after them, the devotees took care of them. But Prabhupada explains that he took, he took sannyas, he had a, a higher purpose to, to achieve in his life. He wanted to, you know, to deliver the world, to s distribute Krishna consciousness. So he had, a, he had an, an important mission to accomplish. So that's why he left them. Some people may say, oh, not good. Certainly, from the woman's point of view, they say this is not good. But uh, Krishna takes care of everyone. A husband may stay at home, doesn't mean he'll take care of you. <laughs> right? You can have so many problems at home. The husband stays at home. Sometimes even the family will tell the, the man, better you go. <laughs> Go and take, go and leave home. Home will be more peaceful without the man. Anyway, we have to under, we want to understand the, 
that the nature of the world is that there's some happiness and there's some distress. We have to be able to put up with that and not get all worried about it. People come to me and they tell me, Oh, I'm so, I'm suffering so much. And when I talk to them and try to find out why they're suffering, you know, it, it, it just seems so strange, you know, I'm trying to understand how, why are they suffering? I say, you're not really suffering. It's only your mind, in your mind you think you're suffering, but actually you're not suffering. Do you have any experiences like this? Do you experience suffering sometimes? Anybody? Pradeep? Yeah? Yeah, the suffering, the distress comes. You know the reason? Because we think we're the body. We're thinking about the body and we think about the things in relation to the body. Things in relation to the body means the family and means also money, these kind of things. This is why we suffer. And the same way, when we think we're happy, we're thinking like that. When we get a lot of money, we're very happy. When, we, when, we, when there's no money, then we're very unhappy. We don't know what happiness is. Real happiness is not coming from the body, it comes from the soul. We have to experience real happiness from the soul, not just from our mind. What we're thinking is happiness. So this is Lord Krishna preaching like this, he's talking like this to Arjuna. He wants Arjuna to control his mind and not to be disturbed. And then he's, then he's qualified to get liberation. Liberation from? What? Liberation from what? Liberation from material life. Oh, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Liberation, well, no, liberation from material life. That's a very nice way to see it, yeah. We want, he'll get liberation from material life, liberation from the material energy or the material nature, liberation from the mind and senses. <laughs> Go beyond these things, come to the higher platform, higher than the mind, you know, the, the mind is higher than the senses, intelligence is higher than the mind, and higher than the intelligence is the soul, right, yeah, the soul. So we want to come to that kind of level, understanding ourselves as a soul. For the soul, now what is the nature of the soul? Yeah, 
Oh, very good, yeah. The soul is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. Right. Who told you all this? How did you know, Christine? You're a good student. You are a good, a good student. Very nice. Yeah, the soul is by nature full of bliss and knowledge eternally. And so we should always be happy in with, if we're thinking of the soul. If we understand ourselves as a soul, we'll be all, we'll be fine. We won't have any problem. And one who is has a, a one whose consciousness has come to that level, they can be anywhere. They can be in any situation, and they're not going to be disturbed. They'll be steady. And so, we we have to try to come to that level. It's not very easy, but what can we do to help us to come to that level? Any ideas? Yes, that's very good. If we do chanting, that will certainly help us. Anything else we could do? How do we surrender to Krishna? How are you going to do that? It's easy to say, I don't know how you do it. Yeah, read, read the book like Bhagavad Gita and read also Krishna book. If we read these kind of books, then this will be good for our mind. Help us to remember Krishna. And when we remember Krishna, then we forget about the material. The more we think of the, the spiritual, the less we think of the material. Prabhupada gives the example about the sunlight and the darkness. As soon as the sun comes up in the morning, the darkness is all removed. So as soon as Krishna or, or Krishna consciousness is there, then the illusion the maya is removed, right? Just like you come into your apartment and you put the light on, immediately all the darkness is gone. That's the part. So Krishna is like the sun. Krishna is like that one switch which puts on the light. So we have to be very careful to keep the mind under control and not to be disturbed, not to get too much affected by the material situations. Just be steady, do what we're supposed to do, and don't, don't get all attached to our success or to our failure. Yeah, we have to, we have to become a little bit detached from the the world. Not too much detached, but we can't be too much attached either. We have to find a balance between the two, between the material and the spirit. We need both, right? You need both, you know, you like to dress nicely, you're wearing nice clothes and everything. You need to have some money, you have to eat, and you have to live somewhere, so you have to have some income. So you have to take care of the material, but it can't be all material. You have to have a balance between the material and the spiritual. We give the example, in China, the trains run on two tracks, right? So. 
We have one track for the material, one for the spiritual. They have to be level. If they're not level, the train will be turning over. So we have to we have to balance material and, and spirit. We have to put some time and energy to the material and we have to also have some time for the spiritual. Some time to do chanting, to hear about Krishna. Just like we make time to eat, we make time to sleep, we have to also make some time to chant and to hear. But it can't be all chanting and hearing. We have to also take care of the material. We have to do work. We have to arrange for our material life. We have to take care. We can't neglect. So a devotee of Krishna is not neglectful. He takes care of both the material and the spiritual. All right, any question? Well, it's very important to control the senses. If you're going to be determined, you have to, we have to control uh, or regulate our senses. That means we're regulated about what we eat, and what the things we do. We don't just do anything and everything. We have some control over the senses, over our activities. It's very important. Controlling the senses, that requires some determination. So this is how we get determination. By controlling the mind and senses, then we will develop that determination which we need to advance in spiritual realization. So determination comes by, like that. You, we have to be careful to control the senses. Don't give in to sense gratification, unrestricted sense gratification. If you put too much salt in the food, it's no good. So too much sense gratification, no good. And if there's no salt, it's also no good. So you have to have, there has to be the right amount of sense gratification. So the Vedas, the yoga books, the yoga knowledge doesn't say no sense gratification, but it says must be regulated. You have to control it. So we, we have to be careful about what we do and what we say, how we sleep, how we act, requires some control. So this is, this practice will give us the determination which we need. Prabhupada said, like when he said, he said taking sannyas was painstaking. There was a lot of trouble pain, you got a lot of difficult, your pains were there, but he tolerated it and he kept going and gradually it got easier. So sometimes like that in married life, you know married life and child comes, it's not very easy. A lot of difficulty, a lot of responsibility, but we have to go on with our life. We go on and gradually, gradually we overcome difficulties. Arjuna could not control his mind. In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 6, chapter 6 is about Astanga Yoga and Krishna is describing how to control the mind and how to meditate. And what did Arjuna say, Christine? Do you know?
Arjuna said, I can't do this kind of yoga. And Krishna said, why not? Arjuna said, because I can't control my mind. He said, my mind is like the wind, more difficult to control than the wind. My mind is turbulent and obstinate, more restless than the wind. So then what did Krishna say? After the... Yes, Krishna said, Abhyasena to kontea vairagi. He said, Abhya, practice. He said, you have... I said, I know it's difficult, Arjuna, but it's possible by constant practice and detachment. Detachment. You have to let go. If you try to hold on to the material, then it's no good. You try to hold on to the sense gratification. Oh, I have to have sense gratification. I need it. It's not the way. You have to practice. It's not easy. It's going to take t some time to practice. You know, just like people come to China sometimes, some that they come from Europe, they're not used to using chopsticks. If you give them kwaisa, you know, give them kwaisa chopstick to eat food, they don't, they take one in one hand, one in the other. <laughs> they don't know how, they don't know how to use chopstick. But practice, gradually they learn. So practice is necessary. Yoga, a lot of practice is required. Gradually the body becomes flexible if you practice. So the mind also, you have to practice controlling the mind. You have, to, you have to really want to do it. Just like doing yoga, you have to really want to do it. And so you want to, you want to control the mind, you have to really want to do it. You have to practice. Oh, I just got very angry just now, I shouldn't have got so angry. Oh, and I said so many nasty things, you know, it's very dangerous. So try to keep calm, peaceful. One lady told me, uh, she had a child and she was telling, they were discussing, there was a discussion about, do you hit the child? Do you ever hit your child? And the woman said, no, she said, I never hit my child. They said, what, what do you do when he does something wrong? She said, well, I simply talk to him and tell him that, you know, this is not proper. And I explain to him that what he did was wrong. And, you know, he learns in that way. You know, some parents, they, have the, they think, you know, you have to beat the child. But you don't. It's not the Vedic way. And Prabhupada said, doesn't recommend beating children. He says, it's not good. You beat the child, the child will grow up to hate you. So we have to love the child. And we show our love, you know, talking to them and reasoning with them. So it takes some determination. Don't give in to our passion passionate nature, want to beat him, beat the child, smack him, hit him, make him cry. When they cry then we're happy. No, that's not the way. You have to be very careful. Okay? Any other points, Christian? Okay, very good. Yeah, we all need to practice. We're practicing. Okay, very nice to talk to you all. We'll finish here. Okay, Hare Krishna.